In this video, you're gonna learn what to play underneath your pastor from the worship keys position. Oftentimes, us worship keys players are the ones asked to fill all the space for any moment that might be thrown at us at the last minute. Transitions between songs, between elements of the service, during offering, during announcements, during altar call, during communion. This video is gonna equip you with everything you need to know to be able to handle all of those moments without feeling caught off guard. You can go into it feeling prepared and you don't have to be a master keys player to do it. Let's break it down. Hey guys, I'm David from Sunday Sounds where our focus is making it easier for you to succeed in the worship keys position at your church. If you're a worship leader or a worship keys player, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. We release a new video every single week to help you take the keys position to a new level. So let's start off with the basic ingredients the keyboard sounds that you need to have ready to go for these sort of spontaneous moments or altar call, underscoring, that sort of thing. It doesn't have to be complicated, guys. You really want a great piano sound and a good pad sound. And if you're not familiar with what those concepts are, we break them down in more detail in other videos. We'll put links in the description to those. Here's an example of what that might sound like for me. So the piano is out front and the pad's just sitting underneath. There's a couple different pads layered together, but it's not overly complex. It's definitely not very bright. It's just sitting under the surface of what that piano is doing. And I can hold those chords out and the pads are gonna sustain for as long as I do, filling the right amount of space. The other side of that is how you play those sounds. But the most important thing is to emphasize shared notes when you change chords. So I'm moving my bass notes there, but I'm not really doing much at all in the right hand. And I'm still just keeping that right hand super static. I wouldn't necessarily stay here for an extended period of time, but if you're just kind of fading in at the end of a service and you don't want to step on anybody's toes, this is a good way to sort of establish yourself. There's one more ingredient that often gets overlooked. When you're supporting somebody who's speaking on stage, it's really important that you follow as they lead. That doesn't mean that you're necessarily trying to like mimic their pacing or what they're saying, but it does mean that you're staying tuned into the intensity, the energy behind what they're saying, what's going on in the prayer, what's going on in your congregation, and you're trying to follow and enhance the moment that is happening on the front of the platform. Now, if that skill sounds a little bit intimidating, being comfortable to sort of adapt and follow whatever's happening. I wanna give you permission to practice doing this sort of improvisational playing at home. You don't have to come up with all of these ideas on the fly in real time. This literally just looks like taking these concepts of sounds and simple chord voicings and trying it out in different keys. Looking at the set list that you have coming up and thinking where are the moments where I might need to fill some space or I might need to take the song somewhere or create space for a moment of prayer or ministry, so you can just hang out for a little while. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy or complicated. And I'd encourage you to practice this in multiple keys as well. And honestly, the more uncomfortable you are in a key, the more it's worth spending some time at home, dusting off the cobwebs and getting comfortable playing inside those spaces. The whole point is just building up muscle memory. That frees up other parts of your mind to be listening, to be attentive to what's being prayed, to what scripture is being read, attentive to what the congregation is doing in response to the message. Okay, so one of the real trouble spots folks run into when they're playing underneath somebody on stage. This is a common pain point that I have personally experienced many times. So if you know you're gonna play a song after this time of underscoring, try and avoid playing anything that hints too heavily at that song. If the song has a keys riff, 
don't play that keys riff during your underscoring time because you might end up playing it for five or 10 minutes. And by that time, when you start the song, everybody's gonna be tired of hearing it and you're definitely going to be tired of playing it. But even more than just keys riffs, avoid playing the exact progressions from that next song if you can. And if you're playing outside of the progression, it's a good idea to stay in that key, but give yourself you know, a couple alternate progressions that you can take to a different place. So let's make this practical. I wanna give you two example progressions that you can learn. We're gonna teach them in the key of C. Keep it really simple. You can practice right along. And then once you've learned them in C, you can take it to any key as your skill allows. We're gonna start off with one of the most basic chord progressions. If you've got the right sounds available, a nice piano, a nice pad sound or two, you're gonna be able to fill space for at least a minute or two without people really noticing that there's something going on that might be off. If it's not gonna be too repetitive, you're gonna be able to follow the speed dynamically. It's just two chords. We're going to play the one chord, which is C, then we're going to go to the four chord, which is F. So we could hang out right there for a good long while. The pad is doing a lot to sort of fill the space. That's why the progression can be as simple as that. But you also have lots of room in this basic chord progression to add a little bit of dynamic interest and to follow as the person speaking leads. And you can do this in the right hand with some simple melodic movements. So one chord, just a little bit of melodic voice leading in the right hand. And again, the core concept really hasn't changed. So if that feels like a big leap to you from the basic chord progression to what I just did, just approach it incrementally. Add one or two little melodic notes at a time, build up that muscle memory and confidence. The good news for you is if you can play the one chord and the four chord in whatever key you need to riff in, you're gonna be able to do it for a little while. Just leave yourself some space in the right hand, let the pad and the piano do a lot of the heavy lifting for you you're gonna be underscoring, no problem. Okay, the second progression is just as simple as the first. Two chords only. The good news is that these two progressions combined together or played back and forth ends up sounding like a lot more than just two chords played over and over. So before we were playing the one chord, the four chord, back to the one chord. Now we're gonna play the six chord. And then the two chord. And because we're never landing on the one, this is a great place to go for a minute or two because it's just begging to be resolved back to the one. And guess what? That starts our A progression over again. So this is sort of home base. And then let's say the intensity ramps up a little bit or things get somber and reflective. We can just go. right back to that first progression again. So there you go, two simple progressions, one to four and six to two. Practice them in the key of C, then take them to another key that you're really comfortable in, work your way around until you can play those really basic progressions in all the keys you need to, and then you can deploy them anytime you're asked to underscore. Now, of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's all sorts of amazing things you can do with underscoring. But for the purposes of this video, if you found it overwhelming to think about playing under someone before, I hope by now you feel like you're empowered and excited to give it a try. Leave a comment and let us know how it works for you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.